Hey guys. Um, so, I just want to create a series of some movements to really share with you guys and really share what kind of Pilates workouts I do. I've been a Pilates instructor for the past two to three years, but I've been practicing Pilates for like four years before that too before. It's just me still for um, just going through my practice and hopefully I was even thinking of sharing it to my parents so that they could even practice and in Korea because I've been badgering about them to really keep up with their Pilates and practices. Um, but yeah, so super casual. This is uh, going to be a typical 20-30 minute workout of just targeting the arms, the abs, and ass, of course, but also as well as working on some strengthening, stability, and even some movement and some ooey gooey of flexibility. But yeah, let's get started. All right, we are going to lie down, head down into that supine. Your feet will just be um, right by your hips, hip to distance apart. Keep your hips really heavy here. You're going to have a little bit of a lift of your lower back, just the size of a little blueberry that fits into it. Can you wrap your hands around your rib cage, four fingertips in front, thumbs in the back, kind of like you're holding a burrito, so you don't want to drop it. From here, let's go in some breathing. Inhale, really spread those rib cage apart, letting all that air in. And then exhale, bring the rib cage in towards each other, narrowing that waistline. We're going to go for a few more here just to ground ourselves. Inhale. And then exhale. Bring it all back in. Just two more like this. Inhale. And then exhale. Bring the rib cage in towards each other. Last one. Inhale. And then exhale. Inhale, knit the rib cage in. From here, you're going to bring your hands into more of a diamond shape. That belt, that thumbs are going to be in your belly button. And those fingertips are going to be towards your pubic bone to that flat. You're in a neutral spine. From here, can you tuck that pelvis by flattening out that lower back in towards the floor into that pelvic tuck. Tailbone slightly lifts up. Inhale, bring the tailbone back down. That lower back slightly lifts up once again. Let's keep going with that. Inhale. Exhale, tuck. And then inhale, bring it back up. So it's kind of more like a, just a pelvic rocking sensation. I'm also going to try to create a video that really just goes into the basics of this, of our breathing and our pelvic tucks that we like to start every class with, just to warm up those lower abs and that lower back here. So you don't have to go too crazy. You have to lift your hips up here. That will come later. But we're just going to go to those slightly pelvic tucks. Isolating only the pelvis here. The legs aren't helping you at all here. We're just here for two. And last one. Bring it all back down. Again, make sure that you have that little space behind you. So we're going to have your hands by your side, palms facing down. You're going to open up your shoulders, palm facing up. From here, ground down on your feet. You are going to tuck that pelvis, and from there, initiate your lifting your hips up into a bridge. One vertebrae at a time. Can you hold? Make sure those knees are over your heels. Really send those knees away from you. Squeeze those glutes and those hamstrings. Tuck that pelvis. Bring those abs in. This is a beautiful verse. This is where we're going to be at all times. Inhale. And then exhale. Start to melt down from your sternum as you roll yourself down. One vertebrae at a time. Come back into that neutral. And then exhale. Tuck. Let's come back into that elevation. Inhale. And then exhale, roll yourself down one vertebrae at a time. As you can see, I'm going super slowly here. Imagine that you're really moving through peanut butter and you're lifting your, your spine up one vertebrae at a time, kind of like you're lifting up a pearl necklace. And then exhale, roll yourself down one vertebrae at a time. As if you're putting a sticker on Tober's mat and you don't want to create any bubbles. We're just going to roll at the top. And everyone meet me at the top here. Make sure that your knees are over your heels and you're parallel to your hips. So if you feel like your knees are going outwards, which is pretty common, just press a little bit more weight into your insides of your feet here. You're going to activate your inner thighs a little bit more, making sure those legs are parallel. From here, we're just going to go into some um, heel lifts. So you're going to, from here, you're going to lift your right heel up, lower, 
Left heel up and lower. Let's keep alternating here. I like to even sometimes put my hands on my hips here to make sure that those hips are going crazy here every time you're lifting your heel up. Kind of just want to work on those ankle stability here, especially since we're not walking yet outside as much. It's easy for our ankles just to get a little bit more cranky up. At least that's what I'm feeling. We're just here for two. Last one. When you are even, of course, put both heels up and lower. Both heels up and lower. You might even feel your calf muscles fire up even more here as well. If you want a little bit more of a child, then your hips are pretty stable. You can even lift your hand, arms up a few inches off the floor here or even toward the ceiling. So you rely less on your triceps and more on those glutes and those hamstrings. You're just here for four and three and two. Last one, lower those heels down and roll yourself down one vertebrae at a time. Shake it up. All right, we're gonna do one more um, series here. From here again, make sure that your heels are under your knees and you are going to go up into that beautiful bridge that we kept practicing. From here, make sure that you're not going over on towards your neck like crazy. It's, kind of, it's not really like a yoga bridge. You're keeping that sternum still soft. So there's still space between your chin and your chest here at the size of an apple. From here, put all your brain towards your left here. Left leg does not move. Right leg lifts up and lower down. Right leg does not move. Left leg lifts up and lower down. Let's keep going at this marching sensation. Every time you bring one leg up, can you look at that other leg and make sure it's not going haywire? Use those inner thighs to keep it still balanced. Again, I like to even have my hands on my hips here to make sure those hips aren't lifting up just because the leg is. We are just here for three and two. If this is too much here, guys, you can always go into those heel lifts just like we did earlier. Last one. And when you are even, bring the left leg up to tabletop, hold. From your press into that right heel to lift up and pulse, pulse, and pulse. We're just here for 10 and 9 and 8 and 7. You should really feel in the right glute. And 5 and 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower that left leg, immediately right leg up, pulsing into that left glute. We're just here for 10, 9, 8, 7. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it down and roll yourself down. Woo! Butterfly your knees, roll around. Oh, of course, my hate printing, but I know it's so good for me. So I make myself do it all the time. Oh, hopefully you guys stick with it as well. It is super effective in getting to those all those glute muscles and those hamstrings. Really warming up the back of those legs. Huh. All right. We're going to go into some ab work. Already a little um, out of breath here. All right. From here, you're going to bring your arms up to the ceiling. Can you bring it back behind you? Like it's a hammock, so really knit those arms together. Bring those hips down into um, ground those hips so that your um, back is still in that neutral spine. You are going to go up. Not a curl up and lower down. Not a curl up and lower down. Doesn't have to be crazy range of motion here. I just want to make sure that your shoulders are lifted off and lower down. And you're going to still keep that little space between your chin and your chest. So you're not, your chin is not overly digging into your chest so that you're pulling on your neck. I also want your head to be really heavy towards your hands. So again, that you are even using your arms here to come up and not your neck. Every time you're not in crap, can you look into your belly button? Make sure those abs aren't pouching up. You're bringing the belly button up and in towards your sternum, so you're really scooping it in. So you want those abs to be flat every time you roll up. Resist your foot three. And two. And the last one, we are going to hold. Bring those abs in. And then let's go with those, those marching. Bring your right leg up and lower. Left leg up and lower. Right. Lower. Left. 
and lower. If this is too easy, you can advance it by keeping both legs up and you're going to go into switching it in air. Or if this is too much, bring your arms head down and you can just go with your legs. Whatever floats your boat here. We are just here for three and two. Last one. Zip those two legs together into the tabletop. You are going to hinge at the hip together. And next. You're going to notice that your range of motion might be a little bit smaller here from when you did that single leg toe taps. So, keep that range of small, range of motion limited, especially if you feel like your lower back is like overly arching and lifting up. That's not what we want. We want to keep a neutral spine, so really work until you feel that little quiver where you can still maintain that neutral spine and lift it back up. Polaris is all about control. And the four. We're just here for five. And four. And three. And two. And last one. And bring it back in. Roll it around. All right, bring your feet back down. We're gonna do one more series here. We're gonna go get into a little more obliques. So from here, can you lift it up? Into a knot and curl, let lift that left leg up. Keeping that left leg lifted, can you rotate your chest towards that left? And bring it back in. So that right shoulder blade goes toward that left hip. Instead of trying to reach that right elbow toward that left knee, really try to reach the right shoulder toward the left. Hip. That'll deepen your twist even more. If you want to advance here, you can even bring both legs up the tabletop when you are going to that twist. Challenging your pelvic stability even more. Making sure that right hip is still grounded so it does not rotate with you like over here. If you want to advance even more, you can send the right leg out long every time you twist. We are just here for four more. And three. And two. Last one, can you hold? From here, can you pulse up and up and up and up? Really right shoulder blade lifting up. We're just here for eight and seven and six. Bring those abs in. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back in. Ooh. Let's go to the other side. The left leg down, right leg lifted, lift up, rotate, and center, rotate, and center, keeping the left hip really grounded. If you want, again, do the same variation that you did on the other side, either lifting up that left leg together and zipping those two thighs together, or put the left leg out long every time you rotate out. We're just here for four. Keep breathing here. Last three. And two. Last one, hold it out. Can you pulse it up and pulse? Bring your left shoulder blade even higher. We're just here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it back in. Let's go into a quick twist. Uh, twist. Yeah, so bring your arms down. Bring your left legs, both legs towards the left here, and look towards the right. One more breath. Let's bring it over towards the other side. Legs towards the right, and you look towards the left. One more. Last one. Bring it back in. Squeeze your knees in towards your chest. You are going to roll like a ball, giving your back a nice massage. Just here for two more. This is the fun part. And you pull yourself up. Good job. From here, you are going to lie on your left side, looking towards the camera, hopefully, or the screen. And from here, you can um, go on your left forearm here, but if this is too much for your shoulders, you can always lie down on your um, bicep here, like you have a pillow. A little bit more challenge would be on that left forearm. 
Stack your hips, your knees, and your ankles here. Make sure those knees are in front of your hips. And really extend those hips back a little bit, kind of like you're sitting in a chair. From here, lift those bottom hip um, ribs up. I would even lift, um, use my top arm to really lift it up, really pressing a little bit more on that forearm to make sure that shoulder is over that um, elbow. So really making sure that you are supported and not just crashing down and towards your um, body. Just that feels really uncomfortable with your shoulder and your neck. So keep that lifted. Keep that neck long. Have your top hand on your top hip here. And from here, can you just lift up that top leg and send it out long. You're just going to lift it up one inch and down an inch. Up one inch and down an inch. I don't care whether it is flexed or extend it, whatever feels good for you. I personally like to flex it, so I feel like it just powers up my glutes even more. This is the same movement whether you are lying on your bicep as well. Even when you're lying on your bicep, make sure that your bottom waistline is slightly lifted so you can still see that air going through you. If at any point your neck is a little uncomfortable right now, you can always look down towards your forearm here as well. To just loosen up that tension. We're just here for three. And two. Last one, make sure it's parallel to the floor. And you are going to send it out long in front of you like a kicking ball. And bring it back in. Take that ball and bring it back in. I like to point when I send it forward and flex when I bring it back. It's really easy to tuck those hips here every time like this. So make sure those hip is still sending back as you send your foot forward. Again, keep your top hand on your top hip if you can to make sure that that top hip is stacked over. You're just here for three. And two. The last one. Can you send it out long? Hold, point it out long. You send it out so much you feel the bottom is even lift up even more. Foot to foot. You're going to Extra rows by sending the toes up and twist those toes down into internal rotation. Up and down. So that leg, that, that, that leg is barely moving. You're just rotating at that thigh bone into that hip socket. Kind of like a screwdriver into that socket, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to use screwdrivers, but you get the motion. You're not just going at your ankle, but you're going with your thigh bones. You should feel that outer glute, that glute meets diet to fire up like crazy. I know I do. We're just here for three. And two. Last one. And turn your rotate toes facing down, heels facing up. You're gonna pulse up and up. Like lengthen out that leg out long, even more. We're just two for six. And five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back in. Whew, give it a little, little smash. One more series here. You're gonna meet that top leg over that bottom leg. Glue those heels together like it's a Pilates V. And from here, you can even lift those heels up slightly just for a little bit more challenge. If not, keep the heels down. You're going to open up that top knee out into next time rotation and bring it back in. Also common, you know, that's clamshell. Especially for those who do bars, this is very common. This is where a bar gets from Pilates. And again, I like to have my top hand on my top hip here just to make sure that my hip isn't going crazy to the back. You're keeping that stuck, even if that means less range of motion in your top leg. Totally fine. You're still keeping that glute meat really fired up. We are just here for four. And then we're literally going to get to the kicker here. Last three. And two. Last one. Keep that sitting rotated. And you send it out. Oof. And bring it back in. You're kicking it out into next in rotation, but bring the heel back to the heel. So those toes. Should be going up toward the ceiling. Yes. And do not mind my ugly and dirty foot right now. Because I'm always walking around the apartment. Um, better feet. It's seen better days. We're just here for three. And two. Last one. Can you send it out long hold? We're just gonna hold here, guys. Hold it, hold it. Keep that top hand on my top hip. Make sure that that hip isn't going back to the back. We're just here for three more. And two. And last one, bring it back. Let's do a quick stretch. Fly down, pull into figure four. Right foot on that left knee. That might still be enough a stretch for people. I like to also have my hands behind my left thigh. And just pump. Oh, this is the best stretch ever. 
Or is that safe for two more? Last one. And bring it back in. Okay, let's go to the other side. Make sure that your right forearm is under your right shoulder, knees in front of your hips, stack it all together, lift up that bottom waist, and from here, lengthen out that top leg out long. Really lengthen out so much that your hip is going away from that rib, you feel that lift up even more. From here, you're just going to lift up an inch, and down, up, and down. So the first series, the first variation is always a little bit more simple, yeah? So it's a good time for you guys to check in with yourself in terms of, where are all my bony landmarks? Is my shoulder stacked up over my, over my elbow? Are my left hip over my right hip? And is my bottom waist lifted up? And again, if your neck is bothering you, look down, totally fine. Same exercise, we're testing for three. And two, last one. Keep it parallel to the floor. Can you kick it forward with an extended foot and bring it back into flex foot? Again, make sure that the top hip is not going anywhere. It's just the thigh going moving into that hip. We also call it hip differentiation in Pilates term, making it all fancy. Just making sure that that thigh bone can move without the hip following through as well. Really like to work on some isolation here, yeah? We're adjusting for three. And two. The last one. Send it out long, even towards the window, if that's where it is, or towards the wall. And from here, flex that foot. You're going to externally rotate it and internally rotate it. Externally and internally. Whew. So the second side is always going to be a little bit more challenging because, surprise, surprise, that leg has been working on the other side, helping to support you. So it's already a little bit more fatigue. You're just here for four. And three. And two. Last one. Hold with those toes facing down, heel facing up, and rotation. You're going to pulse up, up, and up. Really lengthen up that leg out long. We're just here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back in. Give it a little smash all around. One more variation. You know what's going up from here. Glue those heels together. Again, lift up the head heels if you want, or then leave it by. You're going to open up that knee up and lower down. Knee up and lower down. Just into that clamshell. Making sure that that left hip isn't going towards the back here. You're keeping that stack over your right hip. Keep those heels really glued together as if there's like a hundred dollar bills. Really squeeze underneath them. You do not want to lose it. We are just here for five. And everyone's favorite variation coming up. And three. And two. Last and keep that extra room to the rotate it. The knee is rolling really up toward the ceiling. You're going to kick that imaginary ball in front of you. Holy crap. And bring it back in. Let that butt help you. Yes. And you make sure that that heel comes back to the heel every time. We are just here for a four. And we're going to hold it. And three. And two. Hold it out and no hold. And just really see how dirty my foot is. We're just here for eight and seven. Lift at the bottom waist and five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back in. Whew, smash it out. Let's go into a quick stretch. Lie down, left foot on your right knee. Again, this might be enough. Make sure you flex that left foot to protect that left knee. You are going to take that foot and just melt into that figure four stretch. Getting into those outer glutes. Those hip rotators. All that good stuff. If you haven't noticed, those sideline leg series are my favorite um, exercises to do because no matter what you're doing, you feel it immediately and that stretch after just feels all worth it. One more breath and bring it back in. All right, let's just finish with one plank series, yeah? All right, so. You can go into um, just into a hand um, shoulder plank, I guess, shoulders over your hands. But if your forearm's a little bit tender, you can always go into a forearm here as well. 
Your arms are, planks are actually a little bit more challenging because so you're closer to the floor. From here, really squeeze those glutes together, tuck that pelvis like we passed it, scoop those bellies up. So your hips aren't going to be lifting up like here, like really showing off your butt. Nope, you are just hiding your butt as much as possible. Squeeze those glutes, bring those abs in. You're just going to hold here for 10. And nine. And eight, keep lifting up that belly button as if. Um, pretend that I have like a candlelight underneath your abs. You don't want to burn yourself. Keep lifting it up. Last five. And four. Don't collapse into your shoulders. Keep lifting it up. Last three. And two. Last one, bring it in. Quick child's pose. One more. Variation here, of course, goes right over in those two, yeah? Last one. From here, go back into that. Right arm plank. Let's go into some obliques. Your hip dip's gonna be into the left and towards the right. Left and towards the right. Really get into those obliques. For some people, they say it's like, oh, like those like six pack abs or those 11 shapes. For a woman, this is what you're working on. So the only thing moving are my hips, rotating left and right. My upper body stays completely grounded and stable. We're just here for five and four and three. Keep lifting up those abs. Close those ribs in. And two. Last one. Hold it back into that plank. We're just here for five. We're resting now. And that's all. Last four. And exhale. Otherwise, five. Last three. And two. Last one. And exhale. Bring it back in. Go into a child's pose. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Lengthen up those arms. Swivel left and right. <sighs> you can even send your hands towards the right heel. Right here, cheese. Really grab that left hip to really feel that stretch on that left side of the body. Go towards the left. Ground that on that right hip so you feel the right stretch of your body all along that side line. Bring it back to a center. Roll yourself back up one vertebrae at a time. Roll your shoulders. Shake it up. And that is all I have for you. Enjoy your day. Thanks for moving with me. I am sweating. Hopefully you guys are too. Let me know if you guys want um, a little bit more juice, a little bit more fire, or if you want a little bit toned down into a little bit more stretching and restorative. Let me know in the comments as well. Um, this is going to be my first video, so I'm excited to see what you guys think. Friends, family, thank you for moving with me. Um, and then, yeah, please hit subscribe. Yeah, please hit subscribe um, because um, I'm planning to release um, Pilates videos on a weekly basis at least. So there's always going to be something new for you and an opportunity for you to move with me.